Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. In this video, I would explain about Docker client server communication. If we are working on Docker containers, it would be essential for us to know about how the Docker client communicates with the Docker server. In the diagram, I have shown two blocks, one is Docker client and this Docker server. Docker server is basically a Docker host on which the Docker daemon is running. This Docker daemon accepts connections from Docker client. Basically, whenever we execute any commands in the Docker client, those commands will be sent as an HTTP API request to the Docker daemon. And Docker daemon will serve those HTTP requests. So this Docker client can be a Docker CLI or any client which implements this API. For example, I can write my client application using a Python or a Go client or a Java application. Here, we would consider two cases. In the first case, we would see how the Docker client communicates with the Docker daemon in the same host. In the second case, we would see how the Docker client communicates with the Docker daemon from another host. When we install Docker and if we run the Docker daemon, by default, the Docker daemon listens on a Unix socket. So, it accepts only the connections from this socket. If the Docker client is running on the same machine and if it executes any command like Docker build, Docker run, etc., those commands will be sent to the Docker daemon via this Unix socket. But if the client is not in the same machine as the Docker host, then it does not have access to this socket. So, it is not possible to execute any commands from outside of this machine by default. So, to communicate with the Docker daemon from outside of the host machine, then we need to enable a TCP socket to accept connections from the outside. I would show both these cases in the demo. So, let us start the demo. For the demo, I have created two virtual machines in Linux. The operating system is CentOS Linux 7. Let us install Docker in both of these machines. This is the Docker website which contains the instructions for installing Docker on CentOS 7. Basically, we have to install using yum. Here, uh, this is the repo, Docker CE repo, which contains the install instructions for Docker CE installation. So, we need to add this repo to yum repos. So, we are using here yum config manager for adding that repo. For installing this config manager, we have to install yum utils. So, let us start with yum utils command. I am copying this and I am using the command to install. And also, I will do in client as well. So, after installing yum utils, let us try adding the docker ce report to the yum repos. The repo is saved. Client also I am adding. The repo is added to yum repos in client as well. After that, we have to install docker ce in both of these machines. The command is yum install docker ce cli and container d. So, this install instruction will install docker ce as well as the docker cli and also the container d. Now, the installation is complete in both the machines. Let us consider the first case where we have docker client and docker server on the same machine. So, let me go to docker server. So, after installing docker, we need to start the docker using systemctl command. So, the docker is started. Let us verify the status. From the output, we can see that the docker daemon is running. And also, we can see another message here. The API is listening on a Docker socket. So, this is a Unix socket on which the Docker daemon is uh, listening. So, whenever we execute any commands, those commands will be executed via this socket. So, let me try to create a Docker container using nginx image. So, I am executing docker run nginx. So, this is the container name and the image name is nginx. So, when I execute this, first of all, it will try to pull this image from the Docker register. Then it will create a container out of it. Now we have the nginx container up and running. So let us verify first the Docker images. Docker images. Here we have downloaded a Docker nginx image, and also we have created a container of with name nginx. We can verify with Docker ps. So here our container name is nginx, and it is using the image nginx. So basically we have created a container out of an image here. So, these Docker commands internally executes the API requests to Docker daemon on this Docker socket. 
In addition to the Docker commands, you can also use curl command to send API request to this socket. So let us try to list the containers in this machine using an API request using curl. So let me use curl. So we need to mention the method as xget and we need to mention the unique socket here. So using this socket, we'll try to list the containers. So this should list the containers in this machine. So let us execute this. Now it is printing us the containers in this machine. So basically what it is doing, it is sending an API request via this socket. And the method here is the JSON method. And we have used the API endpoint to list the containers. So this way, even the Docker CLI commands also will send the API request to the uh, daemon, which will execute the various Docker commands. Till now we have used a root user. So let us try to execute some Docker commands using other users other than root. So let me try to create a new user here, user add. And I am creating a home directory for the user, home docker user. The name of the user is docker user. So now the user is created. We can verify that. So this is the user is created now. Let us try to log in with this user. Now I have logged in with the user, docker user. So let us try to execute docker ps command here. Now we are getting permission denied. Why? So it is saying that got permission denied while trying to connect to the Docker daemon socket. So this is the socket, right? So this user does not have any permissions on this socket. We can verify the permissions of this socket using ls-lrt. So if you see the permissions of this file, we can see that it is owned by root user and also the Docker group. So to allow Docker user to execute Docker commands on this machine, we have to add that user to docker group. So now the docker user is added to docker group. We can verify that. We can see the group is docker here. Now let us try to re-log in with docker user. So I am logged in with docker user. So let me try to execute docker ps now. Now we are able to list the containers successfully using docker user. This way we can have docker client and server communication within the same machine using Unix socket which is called docker socket. Now consider the second case where we have to access this docker from another machine. So let us try to go to docker client machine where we have installed docker already and we will try to execute commands from there. To test the Docker client and server communication in different hosts, I have logged into the Docker client machine. Here, we'll try to execute some Docker commands, and we would see how these commands will interact with the Docker daemon on the server. So, before that, uh, let me start Docker here using systemctl command. So now the Docker is started. Let us verify the status. So the Docker engine is up and running. And the API is listening on the Unix socket, which is local to this client machine. So now, uh, if we don't do any configuration and if we execute Docker commands here, they will execute via this Unix socket. So let us try to uh, create a container using Hello World image. So this will download the image from Docker registry and it will try to create a container. So now the container is created. Let us verify the container. So here I have used iPhone here because the container exited just after creating it because there is no daemon running inside it. So this container is created in the client machine. So now if you want to create a container in another machine from this client, so we have to do some of the configurations. For example, if you take Docker server, uh, let me try to log into Docker server. So here uh, we need to accept the TCP connections. So this is the directory. So here we can open Docker service. So this exec start command. Here we need to allow the TCP socket. So here I have provided the IP address is 0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0 to allow all the IPs and uh, the port is 2375. Means this is the conventional port uh, for non-TLS communication to this machine. Now we have saved the Docker service file with the TCP socket. To allow communication from outside. Let us execute daemon reload command. 
So now we have to restart Docker. Now the Docker is restarted. We can verify the status. Here we can see a new TCP socket in the Docker status. Order. And also we can see API is listening on 2375. That means it will allow connections on this port from any of the machines. Now we can go back to the client. Here uh, to connect to another machine, we have to use Docker host variable. Let me use export Docker host. We have to point to the Docker server. So let us get the IP address of this server. Here the IP address is 10.0.0.0. So here we need to enter the IP address of this server. So now the Docker host is 10.0.0.60. Now if we list the containers here, it will list the containers inside the server instead of client. So for example, if we execute Docker PS, and this should list the containers in the Docker server. Here we can see that the container is nginx, but in our client we have hello world container. So that means it is printing the containers of server, not in the client. And we can verify the same in the server. PS A because that is exited. So this is nginx container in the server. And the same container is shown in the client as. So this way Docker client and server will communicate from different hosts. So in this video, I have tried to explain how the docker client and server communicates in the, within the same host and in different hosts. I hope you like this video. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel and also share with your friends. Thanks for watching.